The menstrual cycle begins when the inner wall of the uterus or the endometrium breaks down and is shed as menses. This marks the first day of the menstrual cycle. There are five hormones that play a part in the menstrual cycle. Three are released from the brains and two are released from the ovaries. Gonadotropin releasing hormone or GNRH is released by the hypothalamus in the brain, which is this part. And the role of GNRH is to stimulate the release of the gonadotropins from the anterior pituitary. The two gonadotropins are FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, as well as LH, luteinizing hormone. And so the follicle stimulating hormone that is released by the anterior pituitary gland has a role of stimulating the follicles. It causes the follicles to grow, mature and to secrete the sex hormones which are estrogen and progesterone. These are secreted by the ovaries. The role of LH is mainly in ovulation to trigger ovulation and the formation of corpus luteum. Estrogen has a role of encouraging follicle maturation as well as the repair of the endometrium at the beginning part of the menstrual cycle. Progesterone, on the other hand, has a job of thickening the endometrium and preparing the endometrium for implantation for pregnancy. Let's take a look at what happens during the first five days of the menstrual cycle. At the beginning of the menstrual cycle, the progesterone levels, which is the blue line, and the estrogen levels, which is the pink line, are very low. And this prevents the inhibition set on the anterior pituitary gland to secrete FSH and LH. And therefore, you can see there is a significant level of FSH, which is the green line, as well as LH, which is the yellow line. FSH then, as we discussed earlier, causes the development of the follicles which are in the ovaries. Let's take a look at what's going on in the ovaries. So as you can see from day one to day five, the follicle cells, which is the cells surrounding the secondary oocyte, is developing. So here we have growing and developing follicles. And the follicle cells in turn secrete estrogen. And so as the follicles grow and mature, they secrete more and more estrogen. More and more estrogen is secreted by the follicle cells. And so we can see from the hormone level that the estrogen level, which is the pink line, starts to rise here. You can see it starts to go up. This is due to the development of the follicle cells. During this time, in the uterus, what is happening is that menstruation has already begun. The lining has already been shed. And now the release of estrogen is going to begin the repair of the lining. So you can see the thickness drops, but then right around day five, it's going to start to thicken back again. This is due to the action of estrogen repairing the endometrial wall. Now let's focus on day six to 14. As the level of estrogen continues to rise, this has an inhibitory effect on the release of GnRH. These are still relatively low levels of estrogen. They have a negative feedback. They exert a negative feedback on two things. The hypothalamus. So this reduces the release of GnRH, which then has a negative feedback on the anterior pituitary as well, which then has release of FSH and LH reduced. It inhibits the release of FSH and LH. So what we can see in the level of hormones in the plasma is that FSH and LH, the green line and the yellow line, we can see it starts to decline, starts to drop. In the ovaries, the mature follicle survives and continue to develop to become the graphene follicle. So the mature follicle is not affected by the drop in FSH and it continues to secrete estrogen. So estrogen is continued to be secreted and that is why we can see that the level of estrogen, the pink line, continues to rise and peaks at around day 12 here, somewhere around day 12. And what happens when the estrogen level peaks? Very high level of estrogen 
has the opposite effect on the hypothalamus as well as the anterior pituitary. Now, instead of a negative feedback, it actually has a positive feedback. So, relatively low levels of estrogen have a negative feedback on the hypothalamus as well as the anterior pituitary gland. But very high levels of estrogen exert a positive feedback on the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland. Now what happens is GnRH secretion is increased, which in turn increases the secretion of FSH and LH. FSH and LH levels are going to rise, as we will be able to see in the graph. After this, after the estrogen spike, around the estrogen spike, you can see that the LH level, which is the yellow line, spikes and FSH goes up as well. And right around day 14 or day 13, you can see we have LH peak. At the peak of LH levels in the plasma, ovulation is stimulated. So you can see there is a release of the secondary oocyte from the graphene follicle. This process is known as ovulation. Ovulation occurs here. And what is remaining of the graphene follicle is a follicular cells. This follicle cells then, due to the effect of LH, develops into this yellow mass known as the corpus luteum. So the corpus luteum develops due to the action of LH. After day 14, from day 14 to day 21, now that the corpus luteum has formed, the corpus luteum is the one that secretes progesterone. As such, we can see progesterone, which is the blue line. The progesterone level starts to rise after day 14 because it is being secreted by the now formed corpus luteum. And when progesterone levels rise, this has an effect on the endometrium. So we can see this is where the endometrium really starts to thicken. When the levels of estrogen and progesterone start to rise about here, increasing levels of estrogen together with progesterone will cause a powerful negative feedback. There will be a negative feedback exerted by increasing levels of estrogen and progesterone, which inhibits the hypothalamus from secreting GnRH and it also inhibits the anterior pituitary gland from secreting FSH and LH. So FSH and LH levels are going to drop as we can see on the graph here. And the drop in FSH level means that new follicle cells are not going to be stimulated. So there will be no new follicle development. If fertilization does not occur, the drop of LH levels will cause a degeneration of the corpus luteum. So in this phase from day 22 to 28, this is where corpus luteum degenerates. Recall that the corpus luteum was producing the progesterone, which was maintaining the thickness of the endometrium. And so now that the corpus luteum has degenerated, we will see a fall in the level of estrogen and progesterone. And the significance of this is that now that there are low levels of progesterone, there is nothing to maintain the thickness of the endometrium. And this is what causes the endometrium to break down and to shed as menses. And so we go back right to the beginning of the menstrual cycle where menstruation occurs again. If you've learned anything from this video, please do me a favor and hit that like button, guys. Thank you very much for doing that. Really does help the channel a lot. I'll be producing at least one video a week. So if you like videos like this, do subscribe. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.